Hello, welcome to our lesson about the constant of proportionality. It sounds really complicated, but we'll make it simple for you. Let's get started. Today, we will have a mini lesson, practice, and word problems, all three. Let's get started with that mini lesson. The constant of proportionality. Here's an example question to try and show this basic idea. In the market, Garen bought 17 apples for $4.25. Farron bought 10 apples for $2.50. Did they pay the same amount for each apple? That's the type of question that you get with a constant of proportionality. Basically, what we want to do is find the cost per apple. And that may sound complicated, but it's important that we do this, and I will do this every single step, cost per apple. Whenever I see that, I set it up as a fraction, cost over apples. And there's a good reason for that. And I'll show you in, I think, the next question um, when, when we start talking about the order of things. So you set it up, what am I looking for? Cost per apple, I set it up, cost over apple. And then I just fill in the blanks. For Garen, it was $4.25 over 17. Again, the cost over the number of apples. And then we divide. 4.25 divided by 17 equals 25 cents. I'm going to do the same for Farron's. The cost over the apples, 250 over 10. I divide and I'll get 25 cents. They both paid. 25 cents per apple. So they are proportional to each other. Or in other words, there is a constant of proportionality, or in other words, there is a unit rate. This is my unit rate. It is also my constant. And if you go back to a previous lesson, we could have set this up in a table that lists out apples on the top and the cost on the bottom. We've seen this before written out in this way. Today, we're going to take this idea of constant of proportionality and kind of push it to the next level, which is the second question you see here. I walk two miles in 30 minutes. What is the constant of proportionality, or the unit rate? Also, how far can I expect to walk in 90 minutes? And that's where we're going to take things. We're going to take things to that level today. First, we need to discover the miles that I walk per minute. Remember, when I see that word per, I'm going to set it up as a fraction. The first word, miles, in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. And I just set it up. In this case, I'm walking 2 miles per 30 minutes. And this gives me a repeating decimal that is approximately equal to 0 0.0667 or 066 repeating. Or in other words, I walk about 0 0.66 repeating miles per minute. That is not really a helpful tool for us. That's not the way we usually talk. Oh, I walk uh, about 0 0.067 miles per hour or m miles per minute. Sort of a strange um, way of talking about it, miles per minute, but it works for what we're doing. If that is my unit rate, and I walk that much or that distance in one minute, I can then multiply that times any number of minutes, and it will tell me how far I walk in that many number of minutes. So that much in one minute, I'm going to multiply it times 90, and I should get 6. So in 90 minutes, I can expect to walk about 6 miles. It's kind of an interesting question and a little bit funky and weird, but hey, if we look at funky and weird stuff in our lessons, then you'll be ready for it when you ever you see it in your real life. In real life, things seldom work out to be nice, even numbers. Let's try this in another way. Same question, I walk 2 miles in 30 minutes, or same information, but now I'm going to ask, how long will it take me to walk one mile? In my previous one, I was saying, how far can I go in one minute? Now I'm saying, how long will it take me to go one mile? So in this question, and it's going to sound funny, I am going to discover the minutes 
per mile. And I set it up as a fraction, minutes per mile. And this is why it's important to write it out because sometimes you might get confused on whether it goes minutes or miles, which one goes in the numerator, which one goes in the denominator. This is a great way. Write it out, something per something else, and it'll help you to get it set up correctly. This is minutes per mile, so I put the minutes in the numerator, miles in the denominator, I divide, and my answer is 15. In other words, I walk one mile in 15 minutes. All right, and that's a much more normal way of talking about how far you walk and what, you know, how long it takes you to walk in a certain distance. Um, we talk about, you know, how fast can you run a mile, things like that. So this is a more standard way of talking about it, but it wouldn't help you discover how far you can go in 90 minutes. So that's the point I'm trying to make with this part of the mini lesson. Because now the mini lesson is over and it's all on you. It is practice time. Let's take this and try and see what we learned. Constant of proportionality practice time. On my device, bought a trilogy. Oh my goodness. Spelling error. I need an editor. Oh my goodness, I have an editor. On my device, I bought a trilogy for $11.97. What was the cost per book? Also, a follow-up question. How much would it cost if the series had five books in it? And I'm going to make the assumption that if it was five book series, it would still have a consistent cost per book. So I am discovering the cost per book. That means I'm setting up a fraction, cost over books. Cost over books? Yeah. In this case, it's $11.97 over three. $11.97 divided by three tells us that the answer is three ninety nine or the cost of each book or each you know ebook or whatever the cost of each book is three ninety nine that's the first piece the cost per book the unit price the constant right these are different things we call the same exact thing the cost of each book is three ninety nine so to discover the cost of five books I would take the cost of one book 399 and multiply it times 5. One book is 399, five books is 399 times 5. And when I do that, I discover a five book series, if they cost the same amount, would be $19.95. In Mrs. Tiana's classroom this year, her 23 students broke 115 crayons. Super frustrating. Last year, her students only broke 90 crayons. But there were 18 students. Is this a proportional amount of broken crayons? Good question. In this, this is similar to the apple example we did at the beginning with Garen and Farron buying apples in the market. So we are going to discover the crayons broken per student. And again, I always write this out. And it might seem silly to write words over fractions, but it helps me to keep things in order. So this is the crayons per student. How many crayons is each student breaking? Because I have crayons on the top, students on the bottom, I have 115 over 23, which gives me five. Five crayons per student. This year, crayons per student, and this is why it's important to write it down. Notice in the question, I changed the order. In the first one, I said students per and then crayons second. In the second one, I said crayons first and students second. But if you write it out in a word form, it'll help you get them in the right order, like that. 90 divided by 18 is also equal to 5. So the answer to this question, is it a proportional amount of broken crayons, is yes. 5 is the constant of proportionality, also called the unit rate. We talked about the constant of proportionality, which is also often called the unit rate, and discovered using this equation. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.